Get a very special discount from today's sponsor at nordvpn.com forward slash forge. And welcome back. We have made ourselves the first step in a big old billet of Damascus. Jamie has picked this project. He says, Alec, you have to make a guitar. And so we are going to be making the frets as well as the pickups. Well, hang on. What do you mean? The frets? Okay, so here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Make all these out of no, Damascus. You've and then wrong. We've got bridge. I meant a guitar, not a guitar. guitar. What? Where did the frets go? No, you don't get it. It's not a musical instrument. It's a weapon. Oh, I see now. Okay, I need to make another drawing. All right, so Jamie's helped me put together some images to look at as reference while we make this. The guitar originated in India. Some of the first examples date to the 10th century, but most of them were made in the 16th century. So with that inspiration, here's what I've come up with. And there is also maybe the opportunity for a little engraving and embellishment, provided I can somehow get my engraver to work in time. It's broken right now. But let's talk about the pattern. I would like the pattern of the blade to look something like this. I want it to be effectively three triangles working together. And the foundation of this pattern is going to look similar to a chef's knife that I made for years ago. So the bar that we made this morning has a pattern that looks like this. We'll say the red is 1080, the black is 15 and 20. To get there, we stacked up a block of the two alloys. We welded it together, turned it on the diagonal to forge it on the bias. We then went ahead and flattened it out on that diagonal plane. Ta-da, it gives us these groovy S's. For our next step, we need to clean up all four sides of the bar so we can show you how it gets arranged. Out of the middle, we have ourselves two bars. So right now with this billet in this direction, all we would see is some lines like that, but we don't want that. What we want is on the side of the blade, we want to see some really fancy pattern. The pattern we made looks like this, wavy going across from diagonal to diagonal. And so the plan is going to be as follows. We go ahead and we take cuts like this, dong, 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 dong. And then these pieces are going to get turned up to the sky so that when it's all forged welded together you see the pattern. And the final pattern is going to look like a herringbone. And our nice little waviness is going to, you know, you get the idea. You can now barely tell it's a herringbone. But that's the plan. Looks like hairy Damascus. Hairy Damascus. So we're going to start making slices. Take a little blot of acid here. We're going to paint it onto the ends so we can just get the orientation of our pattern right. And the camera will never do it justice every time we do a test etch, but there is pattern there. This is where it gets tricky. Arranging this, from what I remember of the chef's knife, is a brain bender. If they're coming from the diagonals, do I need to pay attention to which diagonal? I don't know. Over to the right and in. Oh, I would do that. Jamie, don't you dare make me feel self-conscious <laughs> about how this is going. Over to the right and in. Are you sure? Jamie, don't do that. <laughs> Over to the right and in. Oh there we God. go. Uh, doing bad. <laughs> right and in. Man, Malfi Fire asked to be ten in his grave. He's alive. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh. 
Hey, it's making beautiful chef knives still. Thank you for reminding me. So this pattern, the original pattern inspiration for this, for when I made that chef's knife, came from Malmasi Fire Arts. Check him out on Instagram, he's an incredible bladesmith. As you can see, we have some precision problems. I clearly uh, made some mistakes when cutting. Look how uneven all those bits of metal are. In order to blame something other than myself, let's talk about cutting equipment. Here we have two options of cutting equipment. We have the band saw, and we have the cold cutting chop saw. You will have noticed, since I've been here, I use the cold cutting chop saw almost exclusively. It has carbide little tips on the blades, and I absolutely love it for cutting mild steel. For cutting Damascus, which includes high carbon steel, it doesn't go so well. All those cuts cost me an entire blade. The mild steel, I can cut for hours and hours on one blade. It's unbelievable how well it cuts, how fast it is. I, I love it. I really love this saw, but with the Damascus, I should probably have a little more patience and use the gigantic bandsaw that we have sitting here. Because the bandsaw, cutting at a much slower speed with coolant, not that my coolant works on this bandsaw, would be a better tool for the task. It's just this is so fast and practical and I love it so much. The trouble with cutting high carbon steel on that circular saw is as the blade gets dull, on the high carbon it begins to wander. You can see our cuts aren't square. You can also see this one's really long, and the reason for that is I dropped my set square and it added an extra eighth of an inch to its length. Right. So let's rearrange all of these so that the bits that are long are at one end and the bits that are short are at another end. What are you doing? You funny banana. <laughs> look at that. It actually doesn't look half bad. I mean, it's awful, but like it doesn't look... It's bad. So I got it tacked in the middle, but welded on the sides. We're gonna get rid of all these pointy bits so we have a slightly flatter plane to work on. But we are gonna be making some noise and I cannot find my headphones. They're constantly disappearing. I'm certain I would be three times as efficient if I didn't lose everything constantly. But these headphones, I lose them so regularly, it makes me wonder whether we've got a thief. So I'm gonna have a look at the CCTV. It's a dodgy looking bloke with a tash. It was only a few minutes ago. Somebody keeps stealing my earmuffs. <laughs> you ready? You ready? Wait, center. Suck. It was you? You're the guy that's been stealing my earmuffs? I was putting fake signatures on and selling them on eBay. No! He never caught me if it wasn't for this meddling dog. While the piece is heating up, let's talk about the design of our guitar. Now, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. There are short blades, long blades, short and wide blades, short and thin blades, long and thin blades, and even curly, whirly blades. But as it is a thrusting weapon, no matter the size or shape of your guitar, it's about how you use it. And talking about how you use it, we're gonna have a demonstration for you in a video next week. But something interesting to note about historic uses of the guitar and how they kind of came about, a lot of the times, our understanding is long blade or sword gets broken or well, they want to repurpose it, they turn it into a guitar. So the smiths back then were being very resourceful and what did eventually become a sign of nobility, it was a very highly embellished blade around the 16th century, it became like a status symbol. Early on, it was recycling, it was making a useful blade out of a bigger blade that broke. Commencing epic forging montage.
as you can see, the pattern is going to look awesome and I cannot wait to uncover it and then add to it with even more patination in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Let's thank our sponsor. This episode has been sponsored by NordVPN and they are trying to do a little cybersecurity awareness. So we're going to talk to you right now about phishing scams. This type of threat typically shows itself as an email that looks like it's from a legitimate organization like your bank, a social media account, or even a friend. And you click the link, it takes you to the scammers login page. You enter your details. They now have your email address and password. This is why you should always be extremely cautious about whatever links you click in your emails. But for a multitude of other threats like man in the middle attacks, malware or malvertising, NordVPN is there to keep you safe. It acts as an intermediary between you and the websites that you browse, encrypting the data that gets sent between you and their servers. They don't log any of it, meaning your internet service provider can't track what you're doing and a man in the middle can't see it either. NordVPN is especially useful if you want to browse the internet from a different country. You want to stream content that you don't have available to you, pick from any of the 60 plus countries you can find in the NordVPN app for iOS, Android, Mac, and PC. And just like that, you've changed your location on the web as well. Please go get an enormous discount off a two year plan at nordvpn.com forward slash forge. And when you use my link, you'll get an extra four months for free. Check it out. They've got a 30 day money back guarantee, so it's risk free. See you all soon. Bye bye.